Summertime means vacation time for so many of us. Good morning and welcome to Maryland Today. My name is Jeff St. Pierre, and we're going to be talking a little bit about ways that you can save some money when you're taking that summer vacation. Joining me today is Nina Heck. She's the Director of Counseling and Client Services for Guidewell Financial Solutions. Nina, thanks for coming by again. Thank you, Jeff. Well, a lot of people right now, we're trying to take a look at vacation time. You might have some stored up. You want to take it during the summertime. Parents, kids have schools off. So now is a big time for people to try to get out there and take advantage of that. But sometimes taking a vacation can break the bank a little bit. So, Nina, I know we're here to talk a little bit today about how you can take that break without breaking the bank at the same time. So where should we start? Well, let's start with the fact that if we assume that you haven't prepared ahead of time and planned and set the money aside, now's the time to sit down and take a look at that budget. Why are you looking at me when you say, (laughs) when you give me that smile, like, I know you didn't prepare for this. Make sure you take a look at that budget. (laughs) Um, We want to make sure that we have sufficient income to meet our necessities Mm -hmm. and then determine how much money is really left over for for a trip or for vacation. Um, One of the things to consider also is where you're going to go, what type of spending are you are you setting yourself up for? Mm-hmm. And really lay that out so that you know what the cost is going to be. And if you find that the cost is going to be a lot higher than what your budget just laid out for you to have available, then maybe you need to rethink things and start looking at what your options are going to be. Well, you just sort of touched on my next question here, and that is, you know, where to go is the big question everybody has to figure out when they're planning a vacation. So if I decide that it's time for me to get away here, how can I come up with a good location uh, that doesn't require a huge financial investment? Well, one of the things I think that's always a good opportunity is when you consider, like here in Maryland, we have the, the you know, deep Creek. And and so we have the mountain area that you can go to, which is a lot less costly than going to the beaches in Mm -hmm. the summertime. So that's always a great option. Plus, you have a lot of outside nature that you can take advantage of with kids that, you know, getting hiking and doing different things. They're not as expensive as it would be if you were at the beach and and have all the, uh, you know, the carnivals and everything going and the, the storefront calling us in to spend money. So that would be one thing that I would I would always look at. The other thing would be to look at what you have available to you locally. Yeah. You know, that's that's always a good option because there's a lot of places that we always think about going, but we never do. And sometimes as much as there are a lot of great things locally that you might not think about doing, you do still really want to get away. Sometimes. You do. And traveling yes. can be a big expense. That's the sometimes the biggest part of the vacation in general. But, you know, like it's necessary sometimes. Do you have any suggestions on how people can save money if you got to fly where you want to go? Well, one of the things always is to look at the dates that you're leaving. You know, uh-huh. if you can, if you have some flexibility and maybe you can get away from the weekend trips and go with a Monday or Tuesday time to leave and come back on an odd day as well, that's going to cut your costs. Uh, the other thing you can look into kayak.com and compare different dates and different prices with different airlines. Um, we also are fortunate here in Baltimore in that we have access to many airports that are not too far sure. off. So you want to look at those options as well. Maybe driving a little bit further to a different airport would allow you to save some money in the overall cost of the flight. You know, something I didn't think about till just recently, living right around Baltimore, it's about an hour to an hour and a half to get down to Dulles, but it's also about an hour and a half to Philadelphia. Exactly. So, you know, I didn't really think about that because Philadelphia seems like it's a different state. You got to drive through a couple to get there, but it really isn't that far away. So it's a great option to look into. It is. My daughter just did that. They went to Philly and flew Mm. out of there and saved money by doing so. So There you go. Well, what about frequent flyer miles and discounts? With the frequent flyer miles, Jeff, you just want to make sure that you're using them. Points.com is a place that helps to keep track of those. And then maybe what it'll allow you to do is to swap your points Mm. with different programs. You can also look with your family members and maybe you're able to share the points, which would help each other in in this time of trying to take a vacation. The other thing you want to look at is do you have AAA or do you have AARP? You know, there's different discounts for those as well. Sometimes with a credit card, it'll offer a discount if you use that particular account. And then always look at uh, saving money on your air tickets, your lodging, and your car as a package deal. So sometimes if you can group that together, you can you can get a savings there as well. You just said one of the words that I want to lead into here, and that's lodging. Uh, air travel is a big expense, but also if you do go somewhere, you got to pay for a place to stay as well. So how can you save on where you stay? So you never want to pay full price. I think that's what we all know. Shop around and look at all the different options that the area has as far as Priceline.com or Hotels.com for different discounts for for lodging where you're going. Um, Also know that 
you know, when you go to the websites, if you look for special words like the coupon codes or discounts or summer specials, Mm -hmm. you know, it may not be the exact time, but by changing up things a bit, you may be able to really get a reduction in what they have to offer. So you want to be aware of those. So if you have a very limited budget, Mm -hmm. you know, you want to keep your vacation more to what you can afford to do and not set yourself up to overspend. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially when you have smaller children, look for places that offer like complimentary breakfast or a stay oh, yeah. for you know, the, the adult stays the child doesn't pay. So different things like that will help to cut the costs. Well, from a lodging standpoint, does it make sense to book a vacation rental? This is an option that I always take advantage of, but then I have two older daughters and we just love to go to the vacation rental by owner. And okay. it allows us to look for for opportunities to rent something that probably if it was just one of us, we couldn't afford to do. Sure. But since they're both thankfully working, we can split it three ways. And then it lets us, you know, really enjoy something that otherwise, if it were one of us, we wouldn't be able to do. So I would definitely look into it. it you know, anytime you can save some money, plus you have a kitchen in the, you know, in the, the places that you tend to rent. Um, so that's going to cut your cost for eating out. And, you know, you have your washer and dryer. There's just a lot of amenities to that. Well, you just mentioned food. And that's what I was going to talk about next, because that's obviously a big expense when you're traveling somewhere. You got to eat at some point. So how can you save on what you eat while you're away? One of the things that I always look at are places that offer the complimentary breakfast. Yeah. And this is a big uh, savings to families, especially because you can go down, you can you can really eat, you know, a good portion of food at the same cost for your hotel. So this is something I would always look for, especially with families. And then you want to do things like bag some of your snacks, especially with children, because oftentimes, you know, they won't be away from the table, you know, a half hour and they're looking for something. So think ahead, bag your snacks, have something for them that's quick and easy, that's not costly, where you have to go in and buy every single time they want something. Um, one of the other things that you can do is, you know, by, the, by what you're saving with, with bringing some of your own things, this will allow you to have extra money when you really want to go out and spend mm-hmm. and maybe treat them to ice cream or different things that, that you might want to do for the evening. Uh, we oftentimes take our water bottles, we'll use them and then wash them out and reuse them yeah. because some of these you go to, you know, some of the places you go to, they want like a dollar fifty just for a bottle of water. And if you've got a family of four, that can add up, yeah. especially on a hot day where you're buying these three and four times throughout the day. I'll tell you, most of my vacations, at least growing up too, always involve some sort of theme park and not just a yes. dollar fifty. You might be paying four or five dollars for Absolutely. a bottle of water. But a lot of the theme parks and people don't necessarily know this is that they will let you bring your own waters in. They do. You can buy a 24 pack at the grocery store for two, three bucks. And there you go. You've got plenty of waters to uh, carry around. That could be a huge Savings. price saver. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to talk about entertainment here too. Speaking of theme parks, another vacation expense that a lot of people will face is that entertainment. So how can we limit the amount that we spend and still create those long lasting memories that we want to get out of a vacation? Well, there's a lot of places that you can go that are not costly, you know, and some are even free, like the National Park Services offer the free walking tours and demonstrations. But I would always stress, do your homework before you ever leave the house. You know, Google the location, look for the free activities, look for low-cost um, options of different things that's available in that particular area. And then take advantage of any type of coupons that you have locally before you leave to go to to a destination because oftentimes you can purchase those ahead of time mm-hmm. and it's going to be better than what happens once you get there and you start looking for them. So if you can get some of that at home and take with you, that's going to cut down on the cost. And then, of course, always take advantage of what you have. You know, mm-hmm. oftentimes where we're staying, we've got a nice swimming pool. There's, you know, workout rooms. They have Uh, children's activities in the lobby that they can do for free, you know. So there's a lot of things right in the place where you're staying that will be free that you don't have to necessarily go out and spend money to do. Um, One of the things I, you know, when we went to the beach, we always tried to bring like kites with us and and frisbees and things, you know, especially when you have small kids, you want to run that energy out. Yeah. You know, so, and those are things that are (laughs) free and the family has fun. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, Nina, for some people, it's not my sort of thing, but I understand it. A lot of people love to go on a cruise. For some people, that is the ultimate vacation. What tips do you have for listeners who want to take a cruise and maybe want to save some money? So, Jeff, with a cruise, you want to really plan ahead. You mm-hmm. want to you want to look at this, you know, probably six, 18 months ahead. Really compare your costs. Look at what the different agencies have. A travel agency might have, you know, as far as the prices for these. And, and then really work towards setting the money aside. You, you might even be able to pay on it monthly and, and yeah. you know, and work your way up so it's not such a major expense all at one time, which can be a real blow to the budget. Um, again, I would stress looking at the specials that the diff- different agencies offer, you know, or online when you're looking at different cruises. 
you may it may not be exactly where you wanted to go, but you may be able to fall into something that has such a good rate that it may make sense to do that for this time around. Um, but again, I think really just having the plan and making sure that you look ahead of time. Well, we've been talking a lot about going away for vacation, which sounds very ideal to a lot of people. It's nice to escape for a little bit, but there is something called a staycation. Why don't you tell us more about that? All right. So, Jeff, a staycation is exactly what it says. It's a vacation while you're at home. But the, what you really need to do is get in the mindset that you are on vacation mm. and really make a plan of what you're going to do and what activities that you'd like to accomplish while you're off then. Uh, again, one of the things that I always try to get people to look at is take advantage of like your local library and the different internet resources that you have available for the to-do things, the, the activities that are sure. available in our area and throughout the state. Um, all of this is listed. You know, it gives some really good advice as far as where to find discount coupons for some of the things that are out there. Uh, it, it just has an array of information that, that will allow you to really make good on this vacation time. And one of the things I always suggest is don't, you know, if you're really going to stay home, don't let the the employer know that. You know, yes. make them think you've gone far, far away because that way you won't have to be taking cell phone calls and working from home the whole time that you're on your stay vacation. And you see, when you <laughs> go away on vacation, say you happen to leave the country, it's very easy to turn everything off it because is. you can't use it most of the time anyway. When right. you're at home, it's very important if you're doing a staycation – don't be tempted by opening up the computer and checking your email. You know, turn it off. Actually try to take a vacation Patient, from exactly, all of that stuff, exactly. yeah. which is hard to do. But uh, I don't know. I'm one of those people that likes to check it all the time. So I haven't quite perfected it yet. But one day, hopefully I'll figure it out. Well, Nina, we have covered so much great information today. Uh, tips about how to get the best fares on air flights and different hotels. Things about going on cruises, staycations. We've covered so much stuff today. But uh, if people want to find out more information or if they want to get some more advice from you, where can they go to do that? Uh, they can give us a call at 1-800-642-2227, or they can go to our website at guidewellfs.org. And do you have any final advice for anybody? I think with any vacation, just planning is really yeah. the key to it and knowing that you have the means to really be able to afford to go and have a good time so you don't stress yourself out because a vacation is not a time to be stressed. That's true. It's a time to refresh. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Well, Nina Heck, Director of Counseling and Client Services for Guidewell Financial Solutions. As always, pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for all the great information today. Thank you again.